The Miami Dolphins went ahead and they added one of the best cornerbacks available on the open market today. Also, are the Miami Dolphins better or are they worse after the first wave of free agency? And it sure seems like the Miami Dolphins are beefing up that interior. They also added a tight end. Man, we got tons to talk about as we dive in too deep with myself and Neil. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you are new. Let's get into this. You're listening to Finn Too Deep. To a back to throw. Blitz coming. They get to him. Oh, he picks off one. And he's in. in. Touchdown, Miami. With the sixth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Jalen Waddle. Giving you unfiltered, informed, and controversial takes on the Miami Dolphins and the NFL Draft. Here's Reason and Neil. What is good, Finn Nation? What's good? It's your boy, Reason. We are back here for another one. Appreciate each and every one of you for coming through today on this. Act. Well, it got active all of a sudden there. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, Neil, man, uh, we have not had you since last week, and there's obviously been a plethora of moves since the last time you were on. Let's get your takes on it with this, uh, with a lot of players out and some new players in over the last couple of days. Yeah, man, it's it's been crazy, and and I'm taken back to when we first saw on on over the cap that the Dolphins were projected to be 52 million over the cap, and there was panic that had set in, and everyone's wondering how we're going to create space to to keep our own players, and then unfortunately, and I know you've probably talked about it at nauseum this week, we lost Christian Wilkins, Robert, you know, Hunt, Andrew Van Ginkle, all moved on. To really bad football teams, but uh, they got paid a lot of money to do so. So best of luck to them, except when they're playing the Dolphins. But I think it's been absolutely amazing to see what Chris Greer has done. The contracts that he is signing are very exciting to me because they're one and two year deals. The the money isn't big. It's it's giving this team the long term flexibility. Um, not paying Christian Wilkins and Robert Hunt make me feel confident that we'll keep Holland Phillips, Jalen Waddle, and more. Um, I, I just think it's been a great week and you're seeing a transformation on the defensive side of the ball. And dare I say that as we stand today, a Christian Wilkins less Dolphins defense, uh, I think the, the overall unit's better than it was last year. And we're only halfway through the first week of free agency and we have the NFL draft on the horizon. So there's a lot of wood to chop. I don't want to make it all sunshine and rainbows, but I think from the work that we've seen to add the quality, the caliber of players that Chris Greer has, has been sensational. Um, we said last week that we liked the Jonu Smith move. It was a triple. I mean, Chris Greer's hitting a lot of doubles and a lot of triples, and you can go to Cooperstown by doing that as well, right? And yeah. I think today we might have seen, when you look at that contract and take that into consideration, we might have seen that home run, um, but yeah, man, this is it's an exciting time. We've really done a good job of complementing this roster. Um, it's not going to be, and I put this in quote, the reset year that I was think I saw some people talking about. There's an act you got to have some patience when you're a savvy GM making shrewd business moves. 
You got to have a little bit of patience. You got to let deals come to you. You got to let players come to you. And right now, Chris Greer, he he's cooking. He's cooking on all cylinders right now. Um, uh, what, what what would you have to say to all those fans that were panicking early on and being chicken littles with the sky falling? And to you know, we'll get into detail with everything. But as you've seen, you know, the strategy and the vision come into play. That is keeping compensatory picks, getting good players at good costs. What, what 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 are your thoughts on those people that were way too quick to panic and some that are still panicking just because we haven't made a massive splash move in their eyes where people like us look at that Jordan Brooks move that was a splash move at that cost that was a splash move well what are your what are your thoughts this to me screams a typical type of Baltimore Ravens offseason where they make their moves focused on the compensatory formula and making sure you're getting those picks right now. The dolphins have two third rounders in their back pocket, uh, obviously from Christian Wilkins and Robert hunt. They're making those type of signings one, two year deal. They're living kind of carpe diem for the, for the now and not worrying about the future. And, you know, I, I love this model, man, especially with a team that hasn't had a lot of draft picks lately, like to know that we're already going the next season with a one, a two, three threes, a four, two fives, a six, and a seven. Mm. Uh, you know, like dra- draft or not, like th- those are huge assets. And, you know, if you get past June 1st and you're sitting there and you get 18 and a half million free because Xavier Howard money comes off, you get this deal with two it done, you get another 12 million. You could be in a post June world with 30 to $31 million in cap space. And knowing you're going to get two additional third round picks. So if there's a player that becomes available for a second round pick in 2025, it's a lot easier to make that move knowing that you have the compensatory formula in your side. So I think this makes Chris Greer even more dangerous. The uh, the bigger the biggest uh, all in poker player in the league in terms of NFL GMs, giving him this kind of ammunition um, and knowing that he has that type of cap space coming down the horizon, man, I, I, I think it's it's exciting because. A lot of people's off is going to end when the draft hits and we could have a whole typical wave of veteran free agency where we're, we're plugging and playing really high quality players to our roster. Um, it's excited, man. I, I'm excited. I, it, it's got that stink of the playoff loss and the, the kind of the refreshment and the focus on the new season. Uh, that's kind of where I am now. Uh, I, I'm no longer about worried about what happened last year. Now I'm focused on, 2024 and beyond well i mean shout out to everyone please smash the like button subscribe if if you're new as you come through we got about 700 of you on x watching right now we got about 525 of you on youtube watching right now so um listen the one thing that i'll say that i like about all this we're setting ourselves up for that draft where we're not hindered, where, you know, if a wide receiver felt to, to 21 right now, they could, they could pull the trigger. All right. Like if Brian Thomas, which I don't think will be there, they could pull the trigger. Now my fifth guy is Xavier Leggett. I don't know if they'd take him at 21, but they could pull the trigger. I think this is, you know, you look at how edge is rounding out. You look at how defensive tackle is rounding out a lot of, we're getting into uh, defensive tackle specifically as we go on the show here. But it, it, it seems like they're setting themselves up with these short-term one-year deals to take an edge player or if Newton drops to 21, they can pull the trigger on a defensive tackle or an edge. I mean, hell, they're setting it up where they can go edge and defensive tackle at 21 and 55 right now. I mean, they are, they are putting themselves in a position where they can take BPA, don't matter what position. And now, obviously, some of us are going to scream interior offensive line and interior defensive line and maybe an extra rotational edge in the in year one are what we need right now the most. But, you know, and we, we don't have a third weapon. Everyone knows I'm on the Hunter Renfro train. Um, but they're setting themselves up for a lot of flexibility with 21 and 55. And that's so important and so imperative, Neil when you don't have a ton of capital. I mean, we're setting up next year. We'll get into the comp picks later. But this team could have around 10 picks next year with the comp picks that are adding up and everything like that. So kind of night and day, but you need that flexibility 
when right now as it stands, you only have one day two pick, and then you don't pick again till the fifth round. Right. And, 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 you know, I think we can bank on having two. the, can, I think the seventh rounder that we have, that's the compensatory pick will probably fall off. You know, it's a late pick. I'm not worried about that. Um, but I, I think we definitely will get those two threes. Um, and that makes us dangerous, man. And, and to know those kind that type of draft capital is coming. I, it is good. And you look at the draft, you know, if we get a Troy Fountain in round one and Chris Jenkins in round two, Ooh. or if we get Jerzon Newton in round one and Cooper Bebe in round two, Ooh. and we solidify those trenches, man. I mean, there's not a lot that you could be out. Cause where I am is if one of those big edges fall in your lap, you know, like you take uh, especially Jared verse to me. Cause I don't, I think Dallas Turner now that Atlanta has traded for Rondell Moore and they did sign Daryl Mooney. I think they're out of the receiver. Space. I think they'll take a Dallas Turner there now, but um, you know, I, the Shaq Barrett thing is, is a great holdover to mm -hmm. Bradley Chubb, a, a great holdover. And we're going to need another guy with him right now. We can't just have Shaq Barrett right now. Even if you Phillips does come back, we're going to need a third rotational piece with them. Tell, Tell Chubb comes back. Right, right. And, and I look, look, let's see what happens out there. There are still a couple pass rushers that I don't think are going to be outside of this, uh, you know, crazy money that we could bring in. You know, uh, Jadavian Clowney would look pretty good in Aqua and Orange right now. Um, but, like, you know, I, dude, I reason the draft marries up to us so well. We're going to be in such a good position no matter what route we take. Um, I think it's going to be fun to watch it all unfold. Like I'm going to be on the, like for this, uh, you, I know you will be too. I'm going to be on the edge of my seat for this draft. I can't wait. Every player that goes ahead of us, every time a guy like Quinya Mitchell, Byron Murphy, Michael Penix, or if any of those guys go before us, that's just another great player that's getting pushed down into our laps. And I truly am operated. My own self is I want the best player available. I don't care about team need as much. And if you can marry the best player available to a team need, that, that even better. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I, okay. You know, I'm a huge Chop Robinson guy. All right. You know what this does to Neil? You could take a guy like that at 21. And because he's going to be in the rotation, that's how you can develop him. You're not asking him to go out and be edge one or edge two right away. You're taking those traits, you're taking right. that rawness, and you'd be developing it properly if you were to take a guy like chop at 21 like now jared verse and leatu latu might be on the board too but i'm just talking about from a sense of you know you're talking about a guy who's got micah parsons athleticism and traits but he's 20 pounds heavier which right. if that don't get you excited i don't know what will well and, and i still think you know it, it's there's not a best route to take like you yeah if someone falls who's elite you take them yeah but i i'm still not opposed to trading back and i'm still not a opposed I. to trading up like I, yeah. Anything that we do to go get, because I, I do think that for the Dolphins we're in a unique position where we want a high contributor early, and and a guy that's mm. an offensive lineman that's a plug and play player that plays every snap is a high contributor. It doesn't have yeah. to be a touchdown machine, but I, I just yeah. have a I have a feeling, and I don't know why that's somebody at twenty one that's like we don't even have this guy on our board because he has no business being there. Potentially falls in the Dolphins' lap. Um, and, and I don't know who that is, but it, all I know is that when you look at this draft, there's only 20 players that can go ahead of where the Dolphins are drafted. That's it. And, and the thing that I have, and this is what I keep coming back to, Neil. Okay, we can sit here and pretty much say there's a good shot four or five quarterbacks are going before we 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 Four we for pick. sure. Four, four for sure. And 100%. there could be a fifth, okay? I agree. And then from what we're hearing, Arnold and Mitchell – who we think should be probably drafted in the 20s are going in the top 15. So right. right there, let's take the low. That's six players pushing down, you know, because we can sit here and admit, me and you do not have four quarterbacks with first-round no. grades, let alone no. in the top 10, okay? Yeah, McCarthy's so, like my 35th overall player. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's what you said. Like, if we just go by that math, that's six players, meaning – we don't need corner right now as you see it. We don't need a quarterback as you see it. That's 15 spots, and w there's going to be a lot of first-round grades pushed down because of those six players alone. And we're not counting. Me and you were both talking about this. Receiver. If they were both on the board, no. We were, we, we were both talking about this before we live. We'd take Newton over Murphy, and there's word he might go top 10 and be the first defensive tackle. Take him. 
goal because right. then that's now seven players that we wouldn't touch that are going ahead of us. That's what's starting to stack up. The number of players we wouldn't touch at 21 is actually starting to stack up and getting close to like 10. Right. Well, you, then you look at receiver, and I think there's four that go top 15 in yeah, Thomas, yep. Adunze, uh, Neighbors, and Marvin Harrison. Yeah. So now, now you're at what? At 11. 11. Now you're at 11. Then you think you factor in offensive tackles. Like you think about Alt, you think about Fuega, you think about Fashano, you think about JC Latham because Latham's there That's now. Four. Man. Yeah, yeah, and he then, is. Yes. And then Tony Pauline put out today. That's at 15. We're at 15, by the way. That Amarius so you know. Mims is now definitely a top 20 pick. He put I told you all. What have I been saying? You know, I've been out here. What I've been is- saying this for freaking time up on this that this is a our Marius Mims is a Chris Greer guy. I've been saying this for like a couple months now. That this, we, it, it's a senior bowl. I've been saying this. Yeah, and we didn't even mention Jackson Powers Johnson, Troy Fontenu, no. Jared Verse, Lyoto nope. Latu, Dallas nope. Turner. Oh, and by the way, Brock Bowers. So yeah, yeah. we do it by that math. One of those guys we just named is going to be there when we pick. And I think that's just such a dangerous position. And here's what also happens. Every you didn't time even name Newton. You didn't even name Newton. I didn't even name Newton. And that's Woo! the guy that I, I, I'm the president of his fan club. Yeah, right you now. are. He makes a lot of sense. A lot but of I will sense. say, like, dude, even like that, though, what we just did, like, I still think someone goes in front of us that we're not even saying yet. Like, it happens every year, man. Like, somebody gets overdrafted that you don't have. I think the prior for me is going to be a Donnie Mitchell, A.D. Mitchell. Mm. I think he's going to yeah. go. Yeah. And I could even see a team get desperate and move up for Xavier Worthy potentially in front of us, man. Man, if Worthy, I'm going to tell you this, bro. If Worthy and Mitchell go ahead of Leggett and McConkey, someone screwed up. That's all I got to say, bro. I got to say. I I have both Leggett and McConkey over both Texas receivers. So do I. Buddy, Leggett's my five. Um, Right now, Leggett's my five. Over the top four, we both share. Like, gets my five. McConkey's my six. Yeah, and I love that. Take those guys. Take Worthy. Take them and push these guys so we can move up from 55 and get one of these legit. Because I'm telling you, uh, you know, as much as I say, Marius Mims screams Greer. What have I been saying about Xavier Leggett since the senior bowl? Screams yeah. Mike McDaniel. When people were calling, yeah. talking about Malachi, when they were talking about Malachi, um, uh, Corley. Corley, I was saying, no, Xavier Leggett is the guy that McDaniel's going to watch the film of and be like, I want that guy. That's like our version. We can make him our version of Debo. Yeah, he's a beast. He, he's yeah. a monster. Let's get into the news here. Before we do, Knight says, we're going to have a better defense this year. I agree. Me and Neil agree with that. Reason, Neil, it's always a great episode. I want to congratulate you on how far your show has grown. I love it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Right now, between X and YouTube, we have 1,921 people watching. We have 1,200 people on X, and we have about 700 on YouTube right now. Appreciate wow. all y'all coming through. Mike Vera says, it appears we went from a, a few great players and a few bad to a team filled with solid players. Not great, but solid. Next year, more draft picks and more money. Yet we got $70 million in cap expected, but we got some extensions coming down. Patrick says, thoughts on Luke McCaffrey as a mid-round prospect. Brother on coaching staff, has size, athletic pedigree. We know McDaniel loves his dad. I, I love him in the fifth round if he's there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love yeah, him yeah. In, the, in the fifth round if he's there. Um, I Because I do think that it, at one of these picks in, after – and in, it could be early. I, they're definitely going to add a receiver to the arsenal. And and Braxton Berrios returning, if they get that done, doesn't change that. There's no. for a dynamic receiver that can that can make some plays at the catch. You know, I, I don't know how early – Let me ask you this. Who would you take, Eric All or McCaffrey in the fifth? We've done enough at tight end. I take McCaffrey. I know I, I, had, where it stands had, right now. Yeah, yeah. They took the formal with uh, Eric All, which I, you know, he he fits the gold rule, right? He does. Iowa he does. tight end. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> a, you know what I'm saying? Wait for Luke. Wait for Luke. Wait for Luke. I, I, you know. And he's a guy with when you have three third third round picks next year should be circled and starred on your program. I agree. I agree. Um, all right, let's get into the breaking news here for everyone. Let's start it off with um, Kendall Fuller. The Miami Dolphins, they are signing Kendall Fuller for two years at $16.5 million per source. Jeremy Fowler says the top free agent corner goes off the board, my friend. This is an upgrade 
from Xavier Howard. I'll give you a few reasons why I think it is before I pass it over to you. Number one, body is not falling apart, especially in the lower extremity like it is for Xavier Howard with the groin, the hamstring, etc. That's number one. Number two, the versatility. He's another hybrid guy, right? You're not going to throw X in the slot. Kendall Fuller has played in the slot at a high level. Now he's a boundary guy. He gives you that inside-outside flexibility. I mean, we especially when we get into those dime packages and such, you know, it also gives you the flexibility to continue to play around with Ramsey in that star role, right? And this, and you got Cam Smith who can slide in opposite on the boundary with him, while a Cater or Needham can be in the slot. I mean, this just adds another guy who gives him flexibility with his ability to go inside out. Um, you know, now I know he allowed six touchdowns last year, but I mean, the Commanders uh, they were just terrible. They were just terrible. Um, he also allowed his higher. Highest passer rating when targeted. He allowed a 101.9 passer rating when targeted coming off a year before that where he had an 84.5 allowed, a 90.1 the year before that, and then a 73.8 the year before that. Um, Listen, you're talking about a guy right here who he's solid in coverage. He's a sure tackler, wraps and finishes, can offer you a little bit on, on run support when you move, when you bring him up. Um, what are your thoughts on adding Kendall Fuller? Because I think this is a home run signing. And I actually think our secondary is upgraded from last year. When you add in Kendall Fuller, where he's at in his career right now, Jalen Ramsey, Jordan Poyer, and Javon Holland, you know, Jordan Poyer, say what you want, but up here, at least he's always going to be an upgrade from Deshaun Elliott. I mean, you're talking about one of the veteran guys. He may have lost a, a bit of a step, but I think Poyer is gonna. I think Poyer is gonna play with a rocket up his. You know what this year because he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got something to prove. And I even said and went on record, Neil. I think he's gonna pick off Josh Allen this year. Ooh. But I like where our secondary's at. I, I think our secondary looks better than what it was last year. What are your thoughts? So I, I, I've had my eye on Kendall Fuller for a long time because he's from Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where I am. He went to a school not far from here called Good Counsel. It's a big power half school close to D.C. In, in a town called Olney, Maryland. It's where Stefan Diggs went. Uh, you know, him and his brother, um, uh, Kyle Fuller, were obviously were just amazing athletes, amazing corners. And when I saw this news broke, I was like, holy shit, the Dolphins just spent $15 million plus a year on a corner. And then when I saw the contract was two years, $16 million, I was like, you know, that to me, he's he's a better player than X the last two years. At that contract, That's a this is a borderline home run type of move for me. It allows you to be more creative with Jalen Ramsey. When I, when I looked at the defense last year, there's three things that I think got in their way. Injuries, which we're still going to battle with Phillips and Chubbs. It, 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 Chubb, it is what it is. Our linebackers against the run that weren't named David Long got washed out. We went out and got Jordan Brooks and Anthony Walker, two physical guys that are great against the run. I mean, Jordan Brooks, to me, I, I've said this in, in Twitter spaces this week, I think he's the best linebacker we've had since Carlos Dansby. Um, mm -hmm. I think beast. he's a good – he's a beast. But then I always think about all the communication breakdowns we had in the secondary, all the pointing mm. after big plays. When you add Jordan Poyer and Kendra, Kendall Fuller to your secondary – they're both smart, savvy football players that are well-experienced, that have won in the postseason, that understand what it takes to be a good team. Obviously, Jordan Poyer wanted to be here because he took a deal for one year, $2 million. He might be the most underrated play, underpaid player in this league right now. Yeah. I, I just think what we've done, the back half of our, our defense is, I think, almost a final product of what it's going to be heading into the season. And it's far superior than what we were at this time last year or at the end of last year. Um, I will say I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing out of Jalen Phillips and his comeback, man. He looks like he is on a mission mm, to get nice. back. Uh, I don't have as high um, prospects for Bradley Chubb, but that's when you add a guy like Shaq Barrett. So, you know, you come in here and we're $52 million over the cap when all this started, yet we found a way to add Jordan Brooks, Jordan Poyer, Kendall Fuller and Shaq Barrett to a defense, add Jonu Smith, the tight end and Aaron Brewer at, at, center and then we kept you know five to six players that we've had around here at very cheap minimum deals i mean what we've done is we've switched the formation of this team from a top heavy roster that when you have injuries to your top players you can't win to a team that still has those type of players minus a christian wilkins yet our roster 
has much more stability from one to 53 than it did a year ago. Um, you're looking at a much more complete uh, roster. And I think that's, that's big, man. When you look at, at it, the only two positions that I, I can say that without a shadow of a doubt, we haven't upgraded or three, if I'm being honest, are Christian Wilkins, Robert Hunt, and then whoever the hell is going to be that number three receiver. Mm. That's practically it right now, right? Like everything else is better. And we pretty much know what the deal is at right guard. I mean, you have been saying it since we saw the money and we'll continue saying it till it trots out in the field and everyone sees we were right. It's going to be Liam Eikenberg and Robert Jones competing at right guard. Uh, right. Unless they dra come out of the draft with someone, that's the sense we're getting right now. And that's why we're saying too, offensive tackle makes a lot of sense in the draft because what would we have been saying for weeks on this, on this channel and on this show, you kick that tackle into left guard for year one Armstead goes, you kick him back out to left tackle. Let me ask you this right now. Okay. We've added Jordan Poyer. We've got Javon Holland. They brought back Elijah Campbell. They need another safety here. Now a guy I was high on on my top 30 free agent list. I don't know what his market's like, I thought it would get pushed down, especially when Justin Simmons got added. Cameron Curl's still out oh, there. Um, Quan and, Con and Quandre Diggs are probably your two best, I think, options my two out there right for now. Us. They're my yeah, two yeah. For us. How realistic do you think that is in terms of, you know, Quandre's probably going to be a bit cheaper. Cameron will be a little bit expensive. And the reason why I ask you is this. Because clearly they're willing to spend a little bit of money in terms of, uh, you know, potentially adding a defensive player. We learned that the Dolphins and Rankins, Sheldon Rankins, they touched base. He's headed to Cincy. Good, good, um, good ass, but good, good. yeah, but he, he went for around 10 million a year, right? Yeah, it's a lot. So, but, but they were willing, you know, they knew that he wasn't going to be a cheap, you know, addition. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think there's a shot they take a shot at Quandre, or do you think Jordan Poyer is pretty much locked in there with Holland? Well, here's the thing is I, I wish I had a better grasp of where they were from a salary cap because we see the moves they made. I don't know who what they restructured yet. None of that stuff has been made official, right? Like we know the Jalen Ramsey thing. We mm -hmm. I, like I don't know what the Armstead thing shook out to officially, and I don't know if they touched Chubb or Tyreek. But what I'll say is they were prepared to pay. Robert Hunt in the $12 million range a year, right? And Wilkins around 22, which said they were they were prepared to spend $34 million in hard cap against the salary cap this year. Yeah, I don't think they've come close to touching that amount. So I think there is the ability for them to go hit another solid B. Um, the player that you named that I would love is Cameron Curl, okay. uh, to plug him at safety. Uh, I just think that he is a perfect fit for what we're looking to do on the back half there. Um, I, I think that would be a home run move. I think they could definitely add a safety. I, they tried, they were working on Deshaun Elliott. They just, they, they didn't go above their floor or their ceiling again and let the seal uh, the Steelers come in and get them. And that's totally the Steelers added him and Pat queen, obviously right after the Ravens got Derrick Henry. So they definitely know what they're up against, but uh, the, the guy that I want to, and we were talking about this before we went on, but the guy that I want to see where he signs next is Jadavian Clowney. Mm. He's in Carolina today. He's got an offer from the Baltimore Ravens. There's two mystery teams looking at him. And uh, I, I was told somebody from someone in the Ravens that he was a player on the team. Him and Matabuki were the two players closest to Anthony Weaver in Baltimore. I wonder if Clowney, for the right price, which I think $7 million a season – total so i don't think that his cap hit has to be seven uh i wonder if he could because then then you're really cooking on the on the defensive front um because he can move around all across he, that front and, he, and and honestly reason i because I, I i've always been a jadavian clowny fan and there's been a couple chances where i thought he was going to end up here yeah we've chased him two other times right in free agency yeah, and one was in the trade with the Tunsil trade, and then he nixed it, and they took him out of it and put a second-round pick in for him. Um, but I, I just think that he's a guy who's more of a mercenary at this point of his career, kind of like what we saw of Ndamukong Sue at the end of his career where he just went to good teams and helped them get over the hump. I, d I don't think we'd have a lazy clowny with uh, Anthony Weaver being here. Um, and I think, I think him and Shaq Barrett would be a really formidable tandem. And then when you get Phillips – back like wow um 
All right, so I, I just saw someone talk about Jihad Ward again in the chat, um, and I, you asked me about it when we got on here. I'm looking up right now because now I'm thinking, do we do we sign a? I haven't seen any. Or is that someone just saying that they think? No, I think they. I think they screwed up. Remember we talked about that. I think they were looking at yeah. the compensatory picks like we were. Okay. And it, it, the Jihad Ward is supposed to be uh, fuller on the compensatory picks. Yeah. Okay. That's probably what yeah. happened. And I was just wondering because yeah. I was like, did we miss something? Because I'm sitting here, I'm refreshing yeah. every second just to see if. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. It, it, it happens fast and furious when it's. We talked about falling. that before we went live, remember? Yeah, but I just thought maybe that it happened because it was the second time I saw it and maybe I did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, it's probably just the same mistake that everyone's reading replication of errors. Guys, w listen, we got to shut you all out here. We got 1,700 watching on X, and we got 914 of y'all watching on YouTube. It's currently at 2,676 people. Did wow. Reader sign anywhere? Yes, uh, Reader did sign with Detroit. Um, Dubs MC says, y'all know how I feel about y'all. Walk me through realistic trade downs for the NFL draft. I think Kohu Smythe are some of the only assets we have. Well, Neil, you brought one up on this channel weeks ago about trading up for a receiver. Pitch that one because it makes sense. Because the one that we and you keep talking about every time is if Bo Nix or Penix is on the board, you could realistically have a team try to trade up and get a little extra value for that 21st pick if because of next year's draft class being viewed as weak at the quarterback position, you might be able to get some extra value there. Another one you suggested was wide receiver needy teams moving up, right? Right. And, and look, and, and I still think it's Carolina, right? Because now they have two second round picks that are high second round picks. I know they traded for Deontay Johnson, man, but he's due big money. And I don't think he's enough to prevent you from doing so. They've built the wall with Damian Lewis Eichelm Ekwanu at left tackle. Robert Hunt is their right guard. Moten at right tackle. Moten at right tackle. They built a really big offensive line in front of Bryce Young. They got him a good underneath weapon with Deontay Johnson. I think they're going to be on the, on the market for a receiver that has some size, like an Adonai Mitchell. And I, like what I think happens is you're going to see those three of those receivers go in the top nine, ten picks. And after that happens, Brian Thomas will be the next man. And then, you know, everyone says it's a deep receiver class, and I agree it, agree with that. But that doesn't mean you want to sit there and wait to the top of round two and get your eighth best option when you want to go get your fourth best option. I think a call that could go ring, ring, this is uh, the Carolina Panthers, Chris Greer. Would you trade from 31 to 30 – or from 21 to 30 – three and we'll throw you in pick 65 the first pick in round three as well to do so um and a potential fifth round pick in the same draft i i think i would i would be very interested in doing that if that was something that was on the table so um that that's a trade that i could see happening and then i would say if if the patriots don't go quarterback at three and they are a team that you know has done a lot of work on bo nicks and they want to move back in for him I keep an eye on that. If the Giants don't get their quarterback at six because McCarthy gets traded, you know, maybe the Vikings trade to five. I think another team could be trading up. You know, it could be the Giants with they now have a couple, you know, a couple second round picks. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of teams. I, I think there's going to be a lot of movement in this year's draft because of, you know, such a robust draft class. You know, I think GMs are going to go after the players they want. Hi, Reason Neil. Are you surprised X has not signed anywhere yet? Josh Hart uses his member. I'm not because we knew what his asking price was and we knew the market was going to say, eh, I don't think so, kid. I'm not overly shocked. I mean, you see, again, we talked about it earlier, body breaking down, asking price high. That's not a good combination when you go in. He's clearly waiting for CB needy teams to pop up. He, he might not even sign in the second wave. It's looking like, I don't know. He should be signed in the second wave, but I think the asking price needs to come down. Yeah, I love X, man. When your ego is bigger than your play on the field, this is what happens. And, uh, you know, he 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 probably could have st stayed in Miami if he was willing to play ball in that contract. He didn't. Um, I still am a big fan of X, the player, always will be. The last year, X, the the man outside of the, the field, uh, you could tell there's been frustration. Um you know, I, I thought it was going to be a Houston homecoming for him, but they went out and signed Jeff Akuda. They have Derek Stingley. I guess that doesn't rule him out completely. 
I, I just don't know where he's going to land. And I don't see, I don't know if X is the type of guy that's going to take a one year, $5 million type of deal, right? Like he just doesn't have that to me. So it'll be interesting. Um, we'll see. Someone will pick up X, but I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's going to be a few weeks. I think it's going to be after the draft. I, it I might be. Gonna... I think he might be waiting a while. Um, it, it, he doesn't, he does not have a robust market. I can say that he does not have a big time market. I, I haven't even heard of one team check in on him yet. Um, so yeah, yeah. he's yeah. going to, he's going to have to be patient. Um, but he's made a lot of money and he, he's in a good spot. So yeah, I'm no one's feeling sorry for a guy yeah. who's made tens of millions of dollars. Uh, let, let's keep it rolling here. The Miami dolphins, they added, they added, uh Oh, watch your back. Julian Hill. Here comes Jody Fortson to the Miami Dolphins. You're talking about a guy um, in Jody Fortson. He's got some size to him. He was a like six, six, six is around two thirty, I believe it is. Um, you know, doesn't really, you know, we're coming off a guy who has, you know, 19 career targets and 14 career receptions for four touchdowns and about a hundred and fifty, just under over 150, 50 yards. Um, again, we talked about this before I we went live, you know, I don't think Smythe or John who are going to be looking over their shoulder anytime soon, but you know, this is a guy who's going to be potentially fighting for that third tight end spot between, um, Julian Hill and Tanner Connor. Well, look, I, I think this is a Tanner Connor replacement at worst and at best, the number three, I'll, I'll say this. He had, if you take Joe New Smith out of the equation, he had more touchdowns than Durham Smythe and Julian Hill combined last year because <laughs> yeah, they had yeah. zero and he had two. He's a big guy. He's a pass catcher. He's athletic. He's a he's a mismatch type of guy. He has some upside. I, I, I I'm not dismissing him. I think he has a shot to make the roster. Believe it or not, um, it's a good signing. It won't be expensive. Um, he might might catch a touchdown or two this year in the red zone because I think that's where he does his dirty work is the red zone. I don't hate it. Don't love it. It's one of the few moves that I'm actually indifferent that they've made. I, I like that they're taking some swings to try to upgrade the position, though. Yeah, it's definitely not on the level of a Jake Bailey or Salvin Ahmed move. Let's be honest with ourselves right now. I know my my cat Cleo that died had nine lives. Salvin Ahmed's got ten. <laughs> I mean, how does this guy? How does this guy? How does this guy stick around? Camp body, man? bro. He's like the Jakeem Grant of the running back room, bro. Oh, Just shows God. off in the training camp, and they keep bringing him back. This will be the year. The Miami Dolphins also brought back a former player, a player who people remember when this channel started off. If you go back to 2020. And our defensive tackle big board that me and EM Dolphin fan did back then, we were very high on Benito Jones coming out. Uh, he had a great pass rush skill set. He needed to improve a little bit as a run stuffer. He's gotten a bit better. He's still not where he needs to be as the run stuffer, but he offers you a little bit of pass rush from the interior, can play nose. Um, Benito Jones is back in last year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Neil. That was his first year as a full-time starter with who? The Detroit Lions. He played so obviously, very well. Yeah. Very well. Yep. We saw him in the playoffs, right? So, you know, Dan Campbell is a fan. They were a fan. He's back here, and he's coming here on a short-term deal, I assume. What are your thoughts on this? Because this is another one of those sneaky, low-cost, pro probably going to outproduce that low-cost on paper when the season's done. I think between him and Neville Gallimore, they've added really good depth on the defense. Yeah, I agree. Good rotational pieces that could stop the run, that are stout, that are physical football players. I, I think they're both good ads. I think both those guys make the roster. Benito Jones, I think, could be a spot starter for this team, uh, especially early on. Um, I don't think Raekwon Davis is that much more of a better, a better player than him, to be honest. Um, and I, I think I, I haven't seen the contract, but I'm guessing it's probably not too expensive i think it's a good savvy move um i'm happy to have benito jones back i i watched him in the playoffs and i was actually impressed by how well he was playing you know he was he was getting to the ball carrier eating some space up on the d-line clogging running lanes i mean he, he's definitely a player that has definitely showed some big strides since leaving miami um so I, I liked it under the radar move it was cool to see him come back 
you know, again, I don't think he's going to conf- confuse anyone with John Randall or anything like that. No, no, no. But, yeah, yeah. but like for, you know, you need, it goes back to kind of the moral of the story that everything we've been talking about is building a complete 53 man roster. Like you can't have these type of players. If you're paying one guy, $27 million, you have to, you know, you got to spread the wealth a little bit here. And I, I think what you're going to see on the defensive front in year one under Anthony Weaver it's going to be a lot of production by a committee. You're going to see a lot of people, you know, in and out. You're going to see people take it on rolls. They've signed another guy that you're going to show in a minute. But they, they've they done a great job of low-cost players that have a lot of experience that can plug and play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think it's going to give them a year or two to really go out and find Anthony Weaver's guys in the draft. Uh, I think Anthony Weaver's going to make a killing in the third round next year when there's defensive linemen. Uh, you know, that we're adding to this arsenal that can get to the quarterback, that can, you know, stop the run. And, and it's cool to see, man. I, I really think like it's it, you can't it can't go unnoticed just the type of moves they're making. These are highly intellectual football players that are coming at a very low cost on short term deals so that you, you, you know, you can build this roster as good as you can for right now, but give yourself the flexibility in a year to start pivoting to some bigger time um, additions once some of that dead money comes off of the books. We got over 2,000 people watching on X right now. We got 1,000 people on Twitter. I want to shout you all out. We got over 3,000 people watching right now, 3,034. More, more watching us than they'll be at a Miami Marlins game this year, probably. <laughs> hey, now. Don't, don't. Oh, here come the Miami fans. Now, you know, <laughs> listen. Okay, we'll cover this, and then I want to get into one thing, too. Um, an interesting thought, a name. So another move we did, we continue to beef up the interior defensive line. They're expected to re-sign to Sean Hand. They're bringing back to Sean Hand as well. Now, so you look at this, right? When you look at this, we've now added Davion Nixon, Isaiah Mack, right? Neville Gallimore, Benito Jones, and we're bringing back to Sean Hand, my friend, my partner in crime, Neil Driscoll. This screams draft a defensive tackle. All of these are stop gaps. Not, nothing other than, than Sealer. Uh, I mean, are we going to count Brandon Pilly amongst these? I don't even know if you can. These right. are all just stop gaps. These are yeah. all literally – it's si- sealer and a bunch of stop gaps. It, it it really is. A bunch of scratch-offs that they're hoping they can hit some diamond in the rough, roughs. But I, honestly, first, Deshaun Hand, I don't okay hate last it. Year. No, yeah, he played, he played all right for us. He, I mean, he had to play a lot more than he probably anticipated. He made some nice plays. I, I like him. Um, but, yeah, I, the defensive, defensive line it, – it, I think it's going to be in the first round. I think that that's where we're heading, that we're going to add a cornerstone defensive player uh, on the defensive front in the first round. Mm. Um, we already know who I won. I'll keep saying it, but uh, <laughs> I, I think that's what's going to happen. But, man, I don't hate what they're doing because you can go into training camp with 90 players, and we're about 57 right now, right? Yeah. You're going to have the draft. You can add 6 7 I mean, right now you're only taxed on the cap or you're only the only thing that goes against the cap is your top 51. You know, all these players you're adding, they're just bumping people down. If you sign enough people that cost in the same range, it's just a wash. You're just adding them to your roster and let the best man win at positions. I mean, they're doing the right thing, man. They're doing a deep dial on the players that have, you know, that have good experience, that have a track record. But you know what? They're going to let them battle it out against people that are like them and let the best man win. I think it's going to be, from a from a training camp perspective, very fun to watch people fight for positions because I think there's going to be positions that are open, but you know, you're going to have to earn it. And mm. if I was one of these young defensive tackles, Dave, Davion Nixon, who was a third, a guy that I had as a third round grade, he went in the fifth round to Green Bay. Um, if I'm Neville Gallimore, who who came out with second round buzz and ended up being kind of a disappointment in Dallas. Like I, this is my opportunity to get my career right back on track. I have on, I'm on a one year deal. If I can do it, who knows? Instead of me- and they're all seeing what Weaver did with Matabuki, and they're saying, "Right, me next, sir." You know what I mean? And it, it goes back to what we said. You know, let's say Newton's off the board at 21. You've set yourself up. We're at 55, right? Tavondre Sweat, uh, Braden Fist, Chris Jenkins, McKinley Jackson. They become options. Right. Right. And, you know, you've said again, I got to applaud them for setting themselves up right now. And what's crazy, too, to me, Neil, look at all 
look at how far they've spread the 27 and a half million Christian Wilkins would have got. Look at how many players they got for Christian Wilkins' cost. And then I, let's throw in Robert. Have they even spent as much as what the 47 and a half million Robert Hunt and Christian Wilkins would have cost? Yeah, and I want to see what deals come out, I meaning what they do with these contracts, these restructures, these void years, because I still think they have one more of these type of moves up their sleeve. Um, whether it's so a I. safety, I, 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 it could be a pass rusher. They obviously were sniffing around Sheldon Rankins on the on the mid round or the mid cost defensive tackle market. So they're they're, they're I think they're going to fill another need on defense. And Dylan Wanham or DJ Wanham just signed a D- two year deal with the Panthers. That tells me maybe uh, Jadavian Clowney's leaving there without a deal. Um, I wonder. Mm. I wonder if that's going to and you know and amplify the opportunity that he could be a potential Dolphin. Well, here's the other thing we got to talk about: a sneaky position that's coming into you know into into frame for me tier two. You know, we've talked about wide receiver or edge being those sneaky positions over the last couple of weeks. I think another one that's starting to creep up now is safety. Right with that third, if they don't add that third needed, and usually that's where you rotate in a young guy with those three safety packages. But I mean, you know, who's gonna be there at, at 55? Right, you know, is Cole Bishop gonna be off the board? Javon Buller, Jaden Hicks, Caden Bullock, you know, a, a guy that I'm fairly high on that I, th- I that I'm pretty sure is gonna be on the board at 55 is um, Dadrian Taylor Demerson from Texas yeah, Tech. Tech. Yep. You know, obviously Miami Hurricane fans love Cameron Kitchens. I mean, they're even setting themselves up for a play at safety if they need to at 55. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this, man. Uh, if this guy at 21 is there, Cooper DeJean from Iowa, he's my seventh overall player. That's a dude that I think if you – he my comp for him is Javon Holland. So if you pair him, it would be like that Spider-Man meme that we all see when they're pointing at each other. But I, I don't think they'll go DB that high. But, I, I you know, I, I think safety could be on the – it like if Tyler Newbin from Minnesota's, Minnesota's mm. there at 55. I think he's gone. I think yeah, he's I, gone. I think he'll yeah, be gone, gone too. He's gone. He's gone. The, the That's why I didn't that name I, him. I didn't name I, guys that I think will go, that'll be gone. The guy that I think goes third is actually Jaden Hicks from Washington State, who the Dolphins did meet with. Um, mm. So, so that I thought that's an interesting nugget. Um, but there's there's some good safeties, like you mentioned, the dude from Texas Tech. Uh, there's Trey Taylor from Air Force. There's Josh Proctor from Arizona State. Uh, there's a bunch of guys like Patrick Morris from California that could be there in round five. I could see them taking a young guy that has some good versatility there and, and making a move with them. It'll be like, again, I think they're going to sign one more bona fide starter here in free agency and whoever that position is, that's whoever that's not, I think they'll go that type of route potentially in the draft as well. Um, because we still do have, I mean, it's been active today, man. Today's been a pretty active day in terms of it NFL moves. Been. I think yeah. tomorrow's going to be pretty active as well. Um, you know, and, and I'll probably start to taper off at the end of the week, but deals will still happen. <clears throat> so what's interesting to me is, uh, so how, uh, how with Cooper Dijon, how do you have him? Do you have him as you would draft him as either if you needed a safety or a corner? Because you can play the slot, you can play the boundary, you can play the single high, like you mentioned, the kind of like how Javon Holland did at Oregon. He's one of those guys where literally you could, he's another one who where you would draft and eventually he would fit the star role that Ramsey runs like you could have him on your safety board and on your corner board. That's literally what you could do with this guy. I think he's just so versatile, man, that he makes him such a good prospect because I think he is the best cover corner alone in this draft. I think you could, mm. when I'm talking about boundary corners, I take him over Terry and Arnold. I take him over Quinion Mitchell. I take him over Nate Wiggins, but I, I, I agree. Think he, I think he's special at safety. I really do. And I, like I just envision a world where you have Javon Holland and him, and they can do so many different looks on the defensive side of the ball, but both of them can cover half the field as well yeah. if needed. And yeah. when you when you have Cam Smith, now Kendra Fuller, Jalen Ramsey at corner, even you know Cater Kohu, Nick Needham. I mean the ver the, the just the depth that you have and the what you're able to do with a secondary. I mean it's kind of overkill. But it goes to what I said to start this, man. If he's the best player on your board, like I, I love him. I, th- to be fair, I know yeah, he's yeah. my he's my number one defensive player, period, in this draft. Um, and, yeah, he's my he, corner one. He's my corner one. Well, he also I don't know if you know this, but he's probably the best return man in this draft as well. Um, 
and I don't really want my starting safety taking a lot of kick or punt return. I've got him on both. I've got him on my corner board and my safety board. Yeah, I think it's fair. I, think I did the same with Graham Barton. I have Barton on my uh, tackle board and my guard board. Prepare yourself for that. I'm telling you, know you man, I mean? that guy, Graham Barton, is going to go higher than most people think. I We've been talking about it on this channel for quite some time. He's, like People don't realize the Dolphins are legitimately interested in him. He is in play at 21. It wouldn't like, shock me. It wouldn't shock me at all if he's the pick at twenty one. And I and it's a good move. It's high. It's it depends high on who's him. the board, bro. Because if Fontenot's on the board, if uh, you know, if Latham's on the board, uh... I, I I'm with you. I, I I just I know this. NFL teams love Graham Barton. They I know because him. it was flexibility, right? You can play literally guard, center, or tackle, right? Yeah, um, I mean, dude, when we talk about these draft picks, I'm just telling you, like, every time we have these conversations, somebody else generates their way into the fray. And that's what I'm saying, man. It is. If you want Graham Barton, move back five spots, get him and get another third round pick. Right. Like, do that. Like, there's just ways to do it. Um, you and I are lockstep on this, though. We know as much as we love the interior offense alignment on this draft, I, I just if you don't have the ability to play tackle at some point, I don't think Greer is taking you around one. Mm. I don't know if you saw, but for all of you who wanted to reek Armstead, he's got a three-year, $51 million deal. Jacksonville, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, the Bills, I don't know if you saw it originally. Diana Rossini reported that it was the Bills. Bills, yeah. And then, and then she took it down right away. Like, and, and and John Christo, uh, Christo Lopez, I don't know how to say his last name, he did a <laughs> post. Yeah, I know. I saw it. I saw it. The banner, the banner for like 30, 37 seven seconds, seconds or whatever. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, that was, that was hilarious. Fun. Okay, so let me ask you this. The Miami Dolphins have added John U. Smith, Davion Nixon, Isaiah Mack, Anthony Walker, Jordan Brooks, Aaron Brewer, Shaq Barrett, Jordan Poyer, Siren Neal, Neville Gallimore, Kendall Fuller, Jody Fordson, Benito Jones. The highest paid players out of that are Aaron Brewer making $7 million a year, John U. Smith making $5 million a year, and Jordan Brooks making a little over um, eight million a year. Um, I just a little and a little under nine million. What are your thoughts on has this team gotten better or worse through the first wave of NFL free agency? I, I think the Dolphins are a better team right now, despite the obvious holes than they were last year. First of all. Last year, they battled health more than any team in football. They will be healthier. I know that Phillips and Chubb are out, but they will be healthier overall. We'll have Jalen Ramsey for a full season, not just half a season this year, right? I think that's huge. He's the best player on this defense. It's huge. Um, I think they fixed the linebacking core for a first time. Jordan Brooks and David Long Jr. together gets me very excited, like very excited. I have a hard time telling you who my favorite move is between Kendall Fuller, Shaq Barrett, and Jordan Brooks. If I had to pick one, I think it's Jordan Brooks because I agree. He's the tone set in linebacker that I've wanted for so long. I will you watch the clips of him flipping out on the Seattle sideline. We've needed that type of leadership here. Uh, and there's Jordan Poyer who does that as well. And like God, man, I I just named those three guys. And Jordan Poyer for two million dollars. It's hard not to love that. Yeah. But I, I think this defense right now, with with the absence of Christian Wilkins, will be better because I'm factoring Jalen Phillips as a key contributor still he might, I think he, I think Phillips is going to miss the first quarter of the season. And I think Bradley Chubb's going to miss the first half of the season. And I think 75% of the season is enough for Jalen Phillips to get his first double digit sack season. So that's kind of what I'm watching. So I, I think that, and I think the offense is going to be way better. Um, and, and the reason I think that is I think McDaniel is going to get out of his own way a little bit. Um, I think, Last year, we didn't have Hill and Waddle healthy together at all, like all season. It was Waddle injured to start the season. Once he started to get his health in, then it was Tyreek banged up all year. Neither of the guys were at 100% down the stretch. I'm excited to see those two guys because I think that when they're on the field, that's the most dangerous offense in football, period, um, with Tua at the trigger. I think Tua is going to work his ass off all off season, do what yep. he does every year, come back, solve his biggest riddle, and be better than he was a year before. I think that we all know what we have in Devon A. Chain this year. Um, Devon A. Chain, I feel like, is gonna is gonna be the guy that takes that next step next year. I think he's gonna be flirting 
it wouldn't surprise me if Devon A. Chain was a top five rusher in the league next year. Um, well, I, I said even if you added Derrick Henry, I was saying you still need to make Devin A. Chain the one, and you need to be Derrick Henry as his uh, as the complementary piece to him. Now, yeah. yeah. Now, where I stand with this is, you know, fans aren't going to like this, and I've been saying this. I think we're actually going to win a playoff game with this roster when it's all said and done because it goes back to what was said earlier in our chat. You can see not only are we spreading out the money, but it feels like we're spreading out the talent. You know, it, it seems we've gone from, you know, some high end and elite players with some eh sprinkled around to now it's more solid far across from front to back, at least on defense. Now on offense, we know they've got faith in Liam Eikenberg. Liam Eikenberg said himself, he thought his best snaps came at right guard. You know, I think they're going to bring Isaiah Wynn back on the cheap. And we know, again, a guy you're talking about guys staying healthy. If Isaiah Wynn can stay healthy, we saw how dominant he was in the run game. And he was putting on tape some of his best pass pro snaps of the last couple of years. He was just an automatic fit at left guard. And it also gives you the flexibility where you don't have to feel, you know, um, hemmed to a guard pick, you know, high in this draft. So, the way I'm looking out, I, I, it feels like they're building for future sustainability. It feels like, you know, people are going to say, okay, it looks like they're setting up for another one year window, but it feels like they're building for future sustainability and they are recognizing the contracts that they have coming down the pipeline in terms of Phillips, Waddle, and Holland. It just seems, you know, like when Tua, when he's playing at his high level, it feels like we're doing smart, efficient things right now. Right. And, you know, I don't need the splash move because the splash move can be a Jordan Brooks, three years, 26.2 million. I'm telling you right now, there's a good chance he outplays that contract. You know, oh, I mean, this is a guy that's so trusted. And I, I keep talking about this because I don't think people realize how amazing this is. So trusted in coverage that they would throw him up one-on-one -on -one against Jamar Chase out of the slot. Like, right. how many running backs are trusted with that kind of task? And then you add the Anthony Walker. You know what Anthony Walker feels like? A upgraded version of a Landon Roberts. He can lay the hammer and run support, but he's better in zone and in pass coverage than a Landon Roberts ever offered us, right? It just, right. you can see Anthony Weaver. He's building this defense smartly efficiently every move counts i mean the only two moves me and you have sat here and basically said we didn't like were salvin Ahmed, and we know he might not even make it through camp and jake bailey those are the only two moves we can probably sit here and say we don't like you know and people were trying to harp on us for you know we're going i don't even want to say quantity over quality we are getting quality players in the quantity and taking it over a smaller quantity. I mean, look at the players we got. Again, we haven't even spent half of the $47.5 million that Hunt and Wilkins are going to cost this year. $27.5 to Wilkins, $20 to Hunt. And look at all the needs we followed out. I mean, you got people out. We added the, one of the top corners on the market. We added one of the top linebackers on the market. I mean, you just, I mean, we added a, you know, a high caliber safety who may have lost a little bit of a step, didn't lose it up here. But when you look at the contract, how can you say no to one year, two million with Jordan Poyer and the chip on his shoulder he's going to play with? I just, you know, I listen, I'm going to sit here and say it. We are sitting at an A minus right now in my, in my free agency grade. I see this as an A minus right now and they aren't done. So um, in the first wave, I'm going to give them an A minus. They, me and you talked about it last week. Some of the best moves you make, or sorry, this week in the spaces, some of the best moves you make are the moves you don't make. And we talk about that with Hunt, Wilkins, AVG, and Brandon Jones. And now we've seen the other moves play out. You know, I'm very encouraged, very encouraged heading into this season. Yeah. And, and honestly, man, even the Jake Bailey move to me, like, honestly, I don't really give a shit about a punter. Uh, it, it, since he did come on board, it did seem like Jason Sanders found some synergy there. I want, I do want Jason Sanders to be comfortable. So if we shank, you know, a couple punts a year to get to that point, it is what it is. I, I want to say four names of guys that I would love to see the Dolphins 
bring on then none of these guys will cost and i braxton barrios for me bring him back as your number five receiver your punt returner guy good glue guy to your fabric eric who's a comment you're four barrios you're fine go find yourself a number three kendall lamb i think kendall lamb was the unsung hero of last year's football team Mm -hmm. if you could get him for the 1.7 vet minimum i don't know what's taking you so long he'll play this year he'll start a couple games more than likely we didn't really miss that much of a beat with him in there. Um, I would be on all over him. Isaiah Wynn, same breath um, for me. You know, he's insurance for me for Liam Eikenberg. I still think we need to draft a guard high, but I, I think that. And then the other name that I'll say that I, I'm interested in, it would not impact our compensatory pick for him because he was released, but Lawrence Guy from the Patriots. Um, mm. He always gave us problems eh, against us. He was always good against us. Well, he went to Arizona State. He was actually drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, got paid by the Patriots. But I, I think he's, you know, he's not going to give you what Christian Wilkins gave you. But when I say this, he's he's a he's a replacement for him where he does a lot of the things that Christian Wilkins does. Not at high that high of a level, but he does those type of things. So I, I, there's just four guys that I have on my radar. And then I already mentioned Jadavian Clowney. I'm keeping an eye on him because I think it's a real possibility that the Dolphins are interested. Um, I, maybe, maybe. Maybe Anthony Weaver's the difference to make that happen than everything in the years past. But, you know, if not, so be it. But, I, you know, man, I, I think we've done a great job. Uh, I, I'm with you. A minus. It sounds like, you know, it's hard to give it an A because it's not like they went out there. But but what they were working with and the contracts they've signed, you know, it's not just Chris Greer, man. Brandon Shore, these guys, like, to turn a $52 million in the red to seeing the type of talent we've added – that's not done easily. There's a lot of sophistication, a lot of thought, a lot of maneuvering that goes into it. And man, I, I like, I'm excited just because the last few moves, and that's the Kendall Fuller and the Shaq Barrett moves, really caught me off guard in a good way. Like I didn't see those coming, and I, I'm paying attention to players that are released that won't impact the compensatory pick formula that makes sense. So like we talked about Cameron Curl. I don't really see Miami being in on them because it will probably negate. Yeah, it's draft cost pick. money. So yeah. I'm looking at players that have been released. That 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 makes sense. So yeah, man, it's been fun too. It's been they've made a lot of moves, right? So they made a lot of moves. It's been a lot of fun. I, I think we see the vision of this team. I really see the vision on the defensive side of the ball starting to take shape. Where Anthony Weaver is not trying to round uh, peg square hole players into his scheme. He's really having the autonomy to create the defense that he wants. Uh, man, it, 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 it's good to see. Uh, I'm excited for this draft. I'm excited for the rest of free agency. And more importantly, I'm, I'm, I'm energized and ready for some more Miami Dolphins football, man. So I agree with Lamb and Wynn, but instead of Barrios, I'm all in on Hunter Renfro. What do you think he's going to cost? Because I agree. I love Renfro. What, what do you think he costs? Five million? Yeah, I don't think he costs much, bro, uh, because of the last two seasons. And, and he can basically blame the quarterback play for, for what's driven his cost down. Um, uh, You know, you can still separate. Still a great route runner. You know, th- what do they call him in Clemson, right? Third and Renfro. He's still going to get you those third downs. Awesome. Uh, you know, I would be, uh, you know, when you talk about adding a weapon, who could who could shift this i would be down for him um and i'm still you know one year stop gap you wouldn't be down for i know the ravens are still discussing with them you wouldn't be down for kevin zeitler for a one-year stop gap oh, did, yeah. they, did, did they make it official with simpson coming back simpson simpson's a jet he, oh he, is it official that he's a jet yeah he's a jet him and morgan moses went to the jets um so i they're talking to zeitler i i don't know man it, he's out there, and I don't think he's going to break the bank. Kevin Zeitler, he's number one on my offensive line want needs. Right I just now. don't think they'll they'll get him because they believe Eichenberg. And and he'll eat into that third round compensatory pick right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think that, uh, I don't see that as a viable option. But I mean, if you add, um, you know. If you add Hunter Renfro, I think that's now everyone knows I like Tyler Boyd. I think there's a little bit of a bidding war going on with the Steelers, yeah, Angles and the Chiefs and, and the, Chiefs, and the yeah. Jets. Um, I don't know what Curtis Samuel market is looking like right now, but he's another guy where he can play anywhere. You know, he can play out of the backfield, slot, boundary. That's another guy, but Hunter Renfro, it just looks like. He would be everything we wanted Barrios to be here, right? Um, so that was 
that would be uh, that would be where I'm at. Hunter Renfro is like near the top of my list right now. So you know who's a guy that I'm intrigued by, and I'm not. It, it have to be for the right price, and I'm surprised he hasn't had more interest than he has. And we already have two of the players who do what he does, but I'd be interested to see what the price tag on Hollywood Brown is. And, and here's Marquise Brown hmm. because he played in the slot a lot at Oklahoma. They moved him all over the place, and he's dangerous. And he's he's fast, fast. He he's Jalen Waddle fast, right? Like he has that type of speed. If you added another dude with that type of dimension, like I, and he has horrible hands, um, he's an inconsistent catcher. He has his warts. That's why he's available. But he gets open. Uh, he gets open quite well, actually. I just feel like, man, with him, Tyreek and Waddle, you could really put pressure on on secondaries, man. And I don't know idea. I, I thought he'd go for close to twenty million a year, and he hasn't seemed like he's had any sniffs. Uh, you know, if you could get him on a one year, like eight million dollar deal, prove it type of deal to get his market up, I'd be all over it. Yeah, uh, that's heavy, though. Eh? That would be a heavy, heavy contract. Um, all right. Let's just update people where we're at right now, where things stand. Um, so when we look at the compensatory picks um, and where we're at right now, as it looks like another day in free agency, seems to be winding down somewhat the Miami Dolphins they got that third and the Robert Hunt third um uh, third for Robert Hunt and Wilkins they're looking to line up for a seventh for Deshaun Elliott now Jordan Brooks he canceled out Brandon Jones Aaron Brewer can canceled out Raquan Davis and Kendall Fuller has canceled out Andrew Van Ginkle so as it stands right now we are looking at three comp picks for the Miami Dolphins and like was mentioned earlier by Neil, we're not really holding our breath for that seventh because that's going to be pretty easy to knock off the board. But hey, you know, they're, they're setting themselves up to go into the next year's draft with a ton, a ton of flexibility. Final thoughts, Neil? I mean, did you see my boy got traded to Seattle today? Uh, dude, that that for me was a trade I would have made um, if we had the compensation because I think – if, if for me, the ultimate insurance policy for two would be a guy like Sam Howe on a rookie contract. Yeah. Like, I, I love Sam Howe. And I, I, you know what? Bold take. I think he beats Geno Smith out for that position in Seattle mm. this year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what my take is, man, like, I understand this team hasn't won a playoff game in 23, 24 years. I get it. And I get that we were short on the results that we won the last year. And I get it's frustrating. I know that everyone, you know, we're fighting at each other. It does. But, man, just how much fun has it been this week to be excited about this team retooling the way that it has? Um, everyone always wants to look at things on the on the worst case scenario, but it feel like it doesn't go that way. We've seen Chris Greer be the type of general manager that can go make those big splashes. Now we're seeing him being the guy that can fill the rest of that uh, that roster. Maybe the failure was on our expectation being too soon. And when they brought Mike McDaniel in, McDaniel in, they really knew that in year three was when they were really going to have to you know transition and really build this thing out to create sustainability. Uh, I look, I, I love what they're doing. Um, we both give them A minuses. I, I I am pleasantly surprised by how they offset the loss of Christian Wilkins and Robert I Hunt. Too. Yeah, um, uh, it's not popular. I'm very happy that we did not pay either of those players that type of contract. I'm I'm more than okay with that because I know that this means that we can get used to you know going buying those Waddle, those Phillips, and those Holland jerseys and feel good about them being here for the long haul. Plus, with all the draft capital they have the salary cap position they're going to be in starting next year. I will say this because I saw a lot of people talking about it and, it and it's around Aaron Donald, right? I saw a lot of people saying, or I forget what the tweet was. Aaron Donald tweeted something. Yeah. Yeah. With the Mike McDaniel at UFC a couple months ago. He, or whatever. He's going to start the season on the Rams and the Rams should be a decent team in the NFC. Right. But if Matt Stafford got hurt and we're at the trade deadline, and the Dolphins had thirty. Don't million do it, Neil. Package. We did this last off season, and what happened? What I'm happened? Down, I'm walking down <laughs> this road. I think there's potential for the Dolphins to make that type of splash at the trade deadline again because they didn't riddle themselves with. Yeah, they're gonna play. have the cap. They're gonna have the cap yeah. space. They 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 avoided playing very they they avoided paying very good players great money. 
Yeah. And because of that, this team, if they get on their run, has the ability to what they did. They got flexibility. When they went and got Bradley Chubb, they could go. They could add a couple pieces at the deadline with the cap they're going to have. And Adam Aaron Donald would be the absolute extreme of, of that. So that's just yeah. Incredible. But it doesn't have to be that. There's a lot of moves that you could make that a yeah. lot of players that are going to be able to look at the worst teams in football. Look at the teams like the team that I would always keep an eye on is the Denver Broncos. And, you know, I, I have a feeling their season's going to be really, really rough. Pastor's hands a thousand percent untouchable if you're going to go there. I've been told that. Yeah, directly. no, no, not Sertan, though. Like, I'm just thinking anybody, like, they could help you out there in the roster. But look at the yeah. team. Look at the teams that could be potentially <clears throat> rebuilding coming after this year. Like, I, I just think there's a lot of avenues you can make, and there's a lot of players that get made available when you least expect it. You know, pay attention because I think the Dolphins can make a big move, whether it's post June 1, whether it's at the trade deadline, you know. For example, if, if they don't get good news on Phillips and Chubb heading into, you know, June, potentially they go find a pass rusher then and they could easily stomach it. So I, long story short, this team has done an amazing job of keeping themselves competitive for this year. I think they're still a fo- top five team in the AFC and uh, they're adding those type of players that you need to get over the hump. Everybody they've brought in here um, that are from the outside in are players that have won a playoff game with the one exception being Jordan Brooks. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, look at Kendall Fuller won a playoff game. He won a Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Uh, Jordan Poyers won them. Um, uh, Jonas playoff Smith games. won playoff games. Uh, yeah. You know, everybody we've brought has won playoff games except for Jordan Brooks. And I don't know if that's fair. Jordan Brooks is a hell of a player, man. I am telling you, like, that was a big time win. They got and, dogs now, man. We talk about dogs a lot. They got and Aaron lot and, and Aaron Aaron Brewer, you know, people go back and watch that Titans game. He's putting Christian Wilkins on his ass. And, you know, I said this a couple of days ago, and the dog comment you just made. This is what I've been trying to tell people the last couple of days. I said, we got rid of the jokers. We got rid of the guys who laugh and that make plays, but no one's intimidated of, and they've brought absolute dogs in. I mean, you talked about supplementing for Christian Wilkins. You were never going to find someone that could replicate his production, but what did they do? They went and they shored up that second level to make sure there's not a huge slippage in the run game. They, they shored up that second level just to, to, to make it sure it's all good and all gravy because they knew they were not going to be able to find someone of Wilkins' impact that they could fit into their budget. So it's smart, it's strategic, and, and you, you, you just can't knock it right now. Again, I keep using the word efficient. We've efficiently used our money and allocated our resources to this point. Now, I want to tell everyone from my standpoint – you know, the Kendall Fuller signing pretty much tells you they've moved on from Legarius Sneed and that whole oh, for situation. Sure. That situation is done. Now, I what's interesting to me as we continue to go on, they still haven't added a legitimate weapon. To, you know, they, they still haven't added someone to complement Tyreek and Waddle. Now, I know they added Jonu Smith, but I don't sit here and view him as – a, a complete complementary piece to what they do. It, it, it's, it's very interesting that they've sat on their hands at the wide receiver position when they have a, a sure need from wide receiver three down, and there's still some good names out there, man. There's still some good names out there. So, I mean, these next day, few days could continue to be interesting as we start to, like, transition into that second wave of free agency here. And with, with the draft picks and setting themselves up, what people need to realize too is you've given yourself you've given yourself flexibility this year. Right. If they're the player you like that you want to move up for from 55 or from 21, knowing we're going to get two third-round comp picks next year, it can make you more flexible with the two-day two picks you already have on the books that you are able to move right now. So... It's just they're opening themselves up so to so much flexibility heading into this draft. And as two draft guys, you know, I mean, there's nothing sweeter to our ears than that. And, hey, maybe this is the first year because I know we see the mock drafts and people are always trading back or trading up. Chris Greer's never shown to be that aggressive. Maybe this is the year where he does show a little aggressiveness in the draft, knowing he's got those comp picks in his back pocket, knowing we've got a lot of picks next year with those comp picks. We've got almost 10 
if you add in those comp picks. So it's going to be very interesting, man. You know, we're only in the middle of March and things are heating up, baby. And it's not just talking about the unseasonable warm weather that's out here. Um, and then Jason quickly, what do we think about the fourth and 20 rule? What he's talking about is the, what is it? The chance instead of punting, you could convert a fourth. Oh, instead of an onside kick, you can try and get a fourth and 20 that the Eagles supported it. And it seems a little too XFL ish to me. So yeah, it's, it, I, man, football is a great game. They don't have to change it anymore. I, I like, I hate that they took the kickoff return out of football, man. Like you could win, you know, we beat the jets one year when we couldn't score a touchdown, but Ted Ginn had two kickoff returns for a touchdown in that game against the jets. I, 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 I like things like that, man. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it. Um, and did our Curtis Samuel dream just die at the end of this show? I, I Curtis Samuel, I think just signed with the Buffalo bills. I see, but that's all I got to say, man. All good. Go dolphins. Awesome season ahead. Great first week of free agency. A lot of wood to chop, but, man, they've made themselves dangerous come April. Yeah, Buffalo Bills, three-year, $24 million deal worth up to $30 million, including 15 guaranteed for Curtis Samuel. The dream is over. Everyone, smash the like button. That's a good move for them, too. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you are new. If anything breaks, I'll be right back here. Until then, fins up all day, every day until Margaritaville sends a cease and desist our way.